Well, here we go at the hotel. People are arriving. It's snowing and huge excitement. Game on. So we're here having our Antarctic Circle. We've got a speaking staff and we're handing that around and just hearing from everybody about where they've come from, what's important to them and what they want to get out of the expedition. Team Inspire, Team Inspire, Team Inspire. Wakey, wakey, wakey. Right, ladies and gentlemen, it's great to see you all here. It's my role to keep you safe. We're going to the Martin Glacier. It's been quite a hike, but definitely all worth it. Day two of expedition. It's great. So excited. Hailing one, glacier zero. If you look up here, you can see where the real ice is. 25 years ago, when I first came, there was ice literally where you stopped and that's all retreated so this is really one of your first signs on the expedition of climate change <laughs> we are training in for the cold weather in Antarctica. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> well, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this in my life. I'm really afraid, but I'm also having a lot of fun. It's coming together. I'm just beyond excited to be here. This is the first time some people have seen snow and what a day to experience it. And what a blend of cultures of different people coming together with that shared purpose of making sure that we can look after these wild frontiers. Right now we're at the beach, just cleaning up trash, plastic, and actually microplastic as well, which, which is called ocean-bound plastic. From what I learned from the uh, talk earlier, I think it's a good start to start from the beach and prevent it to just going into the ocean before it's too late. So around 10 million tons of rubbish is hitting our oceans every year, and I'm confident we're gonna be cleaning up at least half a ton of rubbish, feeling very inspired to see people digging into this at the bottom of Patagonia in Ashwire, making it happen. <laughs> I'm super happy to be here and just leave this beautiful environment better than it was when we came down. We're about to board and I've spent some awesome days in Ushuaia and I think it's going to be even better in Antarctica, so yeah, super excited. Well, 
Well, here we are on the dockside in Ushuaia, ready to go down the Beagle Channel and then head south across the Drake Passage to the Antarctic. Lots of enthusiasm, lots of excitement, but at this moment, I think people are looking back and saying, wow, we got here. All that work, all that sponsorship raising, everything has really come to this moment. It's suddenly become real, I think. For a lot of us, it's felt quite abstract, this idea of going to Antarctica. Um, and finally seeing the ship feels really exciting. So I'm looking forward to the next couple of days, hoping for a, an easy crossing, calm waters, and looking forward to what we see on the other side. so happy to be on board after all this time waiting for this trip. It feels like a dream. We're just so excited for the next stage. And everyone's just so buzzing to be here. We're with a great bunch of people and it's lovely to talk to them and to talk about their experiences and yeah, so excited for what's to come. And the best thing was we saw a whale, didn't yeah. we? Yeah! Like the first half an hour of coming on deck, it was amazing. Never thought we'd see a whale so quickly. When I see the first iceberg, I'm going to be buzzing. <laughs> said goodbye to two years of preparation, all of the madness of the real world. We're heading off into the Drake, Cape Horn behind us. So happy to be here with an amazing expedition team. It's an extraordinary place and a huge privilege and going across the Drake Passage really is a rite of passage to get to Antarctica. Yes, you can fly, but this is the real deal. So let's punch south. Today it's drizzly, overcast. The water is sort of grayish looking and it's kind of ghostly really. You know, you just gotta go with it. <laughs> I'm one with the waves. very moment in time we're crossing the conversion zone. That's where the cold and Antarctic waters meet the northern waters and there's an upwelling. Great place to see feeding animals like whales and the like. But you can feel the cold already. That three degrees drop in temperature. So now's the time to start wrapping up because we are now officially in Antarctic waters. and we're finally spotting a snowy and beautiful, perhaps a bit misty coastline. I've never felt so cold in my entire life. Welcome to the Antarctica.
arrived. I think I could cry. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> and it's beautiful. I feel small and at the same time so grateful to be here and to see firsthand what is happening to it because of our actions. Oh, it was too cloudy earlier and now out of nowhere this view came up so it's 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 very unpredictable but it's that's what Antarctica is all about right it's it's unpredictable it's beautiful and it's mind-blowing It makes you feel really small when you're looking up at these cliffs that are 3,000 feet. You're just this tiny little speck inside this great, great big expanse. But it also makes you feel a sense of awe and wonder, knowing that there's so much more to this world than what we see or experience in our day-to-day -day lives. Inspiring. I think being in this magnificent continent has inspired me in so many ways to just preserve the planet, leave this beautiful continent untouched and I am so looking forward to more that's to come. What this expedition is all about is giving young people, all of us, the chance to talk about action, to talk about solutions and actually go back home and make the change. So back home it's quite warm, populated, you have noises from the cars, noises from the people. Here it's predominantly peaceful and quiet, but the only noise is for the animals. It's just so pristine and it's such an outer worldly spiritual experience that really connects you to what it means to be a human being, to what it means to be living on earth. You come to Antarctica and it's the pristine, beautiful continent untouched. Well, actually that's not the truth. We are here at Deception Island. I think it's important that we realise what we're capable of doing. Way back in the 1850s through to the 1930s, we were down here slaughtering whales, seals. And here is an example of what could happen in the future. After a, a week of, of seeing the beautiful life of Antarctica, it's a uh, pretty sobering to, to now see the death that came along with it, seeing the seeing the boilers, 
where whales were, were harvested for blubber. This is the place that we came and conquered as, a, as human beings. This is the place where we took hundreds of thousands, if not millions of, of lives of, of other beings, of sentient beings that were not human beings, all for the sake of progress. This is the result. I'm incredibly lucky to be here in Antarctica. I've been absolutely astounded by the scale and the beauty and have fallen in love with it. And when we fall in love with something, we want to protect it. We need to do what we always have done, which is solve problems together. Antarctica means for me international cooperation and that's what we need today in order to cope with climate change. So it's hope. Antarctica means hope. Genuinely it just feels like one's in a magical world so far from the one back home. Just completely mesmerized by the scale of the place. At times overwhelmed but it's magical and beautiful. It's something that you can never unsee. What's a polar plunge? Polar plunge. Woo! Let's go. Woo! Just jumped in the sea twice. I think it's the coldest thing I've ever been in. The second time it felt like little daggers were stabbing me <laughs> all across my body, but uh, I feel alive, man. It's good. Carpe diem, right? <laughs> it's cold. I'm shaking. <laughs> I was hugely inspired by so many people, so many stories so many fights against climate change to make sure that it doesn't destroy uh, humanity and biodiversity. I'll bring a lot of that back home and do some fights of, of my own. Definitely I'm returning with a wish to go out there and help educate more than just you know my bubble of corporates and financial institutions and I'm so inspired by all the people I've met here and I had ideas of what I want from Antarctica from this trip and I got all of that and, and more from it. Everybody at this stage of the expedition is a little bit sad because it's coming to the end but look we've come to Antarctica. We've taken so much in inspiration from the continent, inspiration from each other, and this is not the end of the expedition. This is the beginning of the expedition. Go home and become champions and ambassadors to show future generations that we actually care. <laughs>